I'm curious who the teachers are. Have they come from the public schools? Are you recruiting them from other states? Almost, possibly all of our teachers came from public schools, except for the ones who are brand new to teaching. Um, and they're coming out of traditionally dis district schools, usually urban schools. And usually they're in a situation similar to the one I was in, in New York when I taught in Harlem. Uh, and the situation there was, you'll work as hard as you can, you get your kids excited, you get them learning, and then when they go off to high school, because I was teaching in middle school, when they go off to high school, unless they're very, very lucky, they, the chances are they will um, have the same sort of dropout rates and same sort of um, you know, failure rates that, that kind of plague uh, students throughout the city. And so a lot of our teachers were fed up with putting in all that work and caring about their kids so much and seeing them fail nonetheless down the road. And so they know when they come to our school, they can actually work among people who are all on board with the same thing and that we'll, look through, you know, we'll see our kids through high school. And actually, high school is not the end of it for us. Our kids, we're with our kids until they're through college because the dropout rate in college for low-income students is just as bad as the dropout rate in high school. And in KIPP, we have a saying, to and through college. And everything for us, when we talk to our kids, it's not getting to college, it's going to and through college. Even under the best circumstances, they say a lot of times it's one in three people will make it from their freshman year to walking across that yeah. stage and taking their diploma. Yeah, the national average for, for um, students throughout the country is 32 percent, yeah, right? 32. So, okay. I mean, and that's, that's not low income students, that's, that's all just students. In and that's, that's yeah. a bad sign for America. Mm -hmm. um, the teachers in public schools, uh, they get tenured after X amount of years, and sadly in times like this when there are budget crunches, when schools are looking to make ends meet, some of their youngest are cut. How are teachers there rewarded? Mm -hmm. How are they um, How are they judged? I mean, how do you keep them there? How are they right. paid? Um, our teachers make 27, per this is specific to our schools, but our teachers make 27 percent more than they would make if they were in the district schools. Really? Um, and they work a significant number of hours in addition to what they would um, in a district school. So they, the money is, is fine. I, I think as long as they have enough money to raise a family and do the things, that, you know, have the basic, you know, um, things you need in life. Teachers are not in it for the money, right? And so it's, it's not about financial rewards for us, but what you do have in charter schools is instead of advancing through the ranks or becoming a principal or, or, um, or whatever it is you want to do uh, based on seniority, in the charter school it's based on merit, how good you are as a teacher, how good you are as a manager. And so, um, so there are those opportunities and career paths. We're, we're developing now career paths within the teaching profession, so you can go from an apprentice to a, to a a uh, full teacher to a master teacher, and then we're, uh, we're building career paths in education management as well, so you can go from a teacher to a department chair to a principal. This offers people in this day and age when people switch jobs a lot, this offers paths for people, um, and these exist in charter schools, and in the district they exist to some degree, but oftentimes it's based on how long you've been in the system rather right. than how good you are. Right, and so you are simply, you look at the teachers and if they're performing and if they're a good fit, and if right. they are, great, if not, then so long. Right, and honestly, you know, a lot is made of the, the, we can fire teachers if we need to, and a lot is made of that. To be honest, we don't fire very many teachers. I mean, we, we've done it before, and, but usually people come around after some, you know, training and some support and that sort of thing. The majority of teachers who are failing are failing because of lack of support, um, and that's true in any kind of school. There are some folks who are just not cut out for teaching, and they're usually very good people, but they just don't have what, what it takes to be a teacher. And teaching in an urban environment in particular is a very, very, very difficult job, and so it, it takes a special kind of person. It is difficult, but a lot of times it's glamorized by Hollywood, and people think, well, I can be the person who stands up right. to a lot of these you know, children who come from very different, very tough situations, and right. I can be the hero. But that, that, right. I mean, what, what you learn is that um, what happens in two hours in a movie takes yeah. more like, you know, 10 years to actually accomplish, but, um, but it can be accomplished. And one of the great heroes of education passed away recently, Jaime Escalante, and I've actually had the good fortune to meet him. And everything that happened in that movie about Jaime Escalante was 100% true. It didn't happen in two hours, right. again, but over the course of his career, he learned how to get kids and very quickly bring them up to speed uh, to where they need to be and even beyond where most kids were. That's what we're trying to do in KIPP. It's hard work, it's good discipline, it's really, really motivated teachers and with all those ingredients you can actually do those things that, are, that happen in the movies, but it is very hard and, and they do make it look easier. Team <laughs> Charter Schools, you want to put Newark on the map for education excellence. 
Yeah, well, I think Newark is on the map a little bit for educational excellence because we have an unbelievably vibrant charter sector right now. I would say probably more good charter schools than any other city in the country. Not more charter schools, but more high quality charter schools than any other major city in the country. Why do you think and that it's is? growing. Um, it's a good question. I think there's a tremendous hunger in the city of Newark for educational uh, opportunities. Uh, the, the funding in New Jersey for charter schools, while we still get a dramatic cut from what the district gets, it's better than it is in many states. And so I think there are a lot of things um, going for Newark in that sort of contribute to a uh, vibrant charter sector, and, it, and it's only getting better. Well, in our last segment, we talked about how now is the time to really push for change because you have the public behind you, and that's right. not always the case. Right. Correct? Yeah, well, that's true, and, and charters have moved from being sort of boutiques to being a, a, a serious um, uh, alternate system almost in some ways. And, um, and so now is the time in terms of where we are as a movement, but honestly, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 50 years ago was the time. I mean, there are kids every day. I got a letter a couple days ago, um, and we had our lottery a few, uh, like a, two months ago, and so I got a letter from a student who's in a school, and she's like, the school is failing. You know, I, I, I love the teachers, I love the kids here, but I'm just not learning. I'm working as hard as I can, and she, I, and this is like a terrible type of thing for me to have to read because that student can't come to our school. I had to write back to her and say, I'm sorry, yeah. your fate depends on a lottery ball. Yeah, that, that's, that's a shame. Right. Do you foresee that changing in the, let's say the next five years? How many more charter schools do you think that we could see? In the next five, I'm, I think in Newark alone, you're going to see a handful of charter schools. Um, what does it take to get a charter school up and running? If, if you're an individual who is passionate about education and, you know, in your neighborhood there isn't a charter school, do mm -hmm. you contact Team charter school? Usually, well, you could do that if you want to apply to help uh, help us open schools, which some some folks have done. Um, if you want to start your own school, which a lot of teachers, it's almost always teachers starting mm -hmm. the school. If you want to if you want to start your own school, well, that was what you did. That's exactly what I did. Um, you write to the district to the Department of Education. They have an application. It's a very rigorous process. Mm -hmm. And then the hardest thing is you have to find a facility because charter schools don't get facility money. So districts, in addition to getting uh, a lot more money than charter schools do, they also have their buildings already right? We don't have those. So we have to go out and become real estate experts despite the fact that what we really are is teachers, right? And so we, the very hardest thing is, is finding facilities. Whereas in, in some places, and this is how, this is one disadvantage Newark has, in like New York City, the charter schools are given district space. If they, anywhere they? that there's oh, empty space, they get space for a dollar a year just like the district school would get. Because honestly, our kids are public school students and they should have a right to a building just as much as they did when they were in fourth grade in a district school. We've got about 15 seconds left. Okay. Final thought. Well, I think that these are indeed very exciting times in New Jersey, in Newark specifically, but throughout the state for charter schools. We have the support of the governor, we have the support of the president, and we have a lot of local support. 4,000 parents on our waiting list and 20,000 across the state is no laughing matter. And so Sounds I, like some amazing things coming out of there. Thank you so much so. for taking the time to talk to thank us. You. And I want to thank all of my guests this half hour. Uh, this hour, Assemblywoman JC, as well as Darrell Bradford, the Executive Director of E3, and Ryan Hill, the Ex Executive Director of Team Charter Schools. Thank you all for giving your perspective on the state of our schools here in New Jersey. The battle in Trenton over school choice, school budgets, and how the next generation of students is educated, clearly just the beginning. We'll be watching it all unfold. For everyone here at We've Got Issues, I'm Laura Jones.